So Utsal, uh, welcome. Uh, this is Ajay Shah. I'm the Executive Vice President of World New Council of America, uh, BHPA. And with me is Utsal Chakrabarti, who's our Director of uh, Awareness and Advocacy uh, based in Washington, D.C. Utsal, welcome to the first version of the Hindu Cafe. This is going to be our weekly uh, banter, weekly podcast, a whole, a radio, a, a TV, uh, host, a TV show, or whatever you want to call it, right? Uh, it's just two of us, and we can talk about anything uh, we want to. Uh, I, I think it's going to be an interesting ride. I think we are going to be uh, we are going to really enjoy because we share a lot of common interests and we have common uh, you know common things that we can talk about and we disagree, agree. But it's going to be an interesting chat all about Hindu dharma, about Hindutva, and all the issues that really concern Hindus in America and around the world. So I want to extend a warm welcome to you for our very first Hindu guy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ajayji. And uh, thank you for inviting me. And uh, yeah, I look forward to this and we should be doing this every week. Uh, and uh, I think we will have a lot of important and interesting things to discuss. And uh, we'll present not only the Vishwa Hindu Parishad of America, the World Hindu Council of America's perspective, but the perspective of the Hindu community in general in the United States. And we'll discuss issues from around the world. Hey, and so this is not really just an invitation, okay? This is, you're the co-host here, so uh, <laughs> I, I think uh, you think of this as uh, you're now committed to this. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, I am committed, and uh, thank, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and so now we got your record on that. So now let's start. I, mean, I think you know the, uh, the really the uh, the topic that's on everyone's mind right now is the uh, COVID nineteen situation, right? So. This is unprecedented. This is something that none of us has ever experienced in our lifetimes. Um, it's a pandemic like no other. Uh, just as of yesterday, 20,000 uh, people have lost their lives just in America. And um, I, you know, uh, this is a crisis that has brought communities across the US, all the faith communities, all the, you know, everyone who has interest in the well beings of humanity have been brought together by this. Um, are Hindus contributing to the service of uh, the society where they live here, right here in America? Yeah, yeah, very much so. And, uh, you know, the Hindu American community is, is quite big and, uh, you know, they're, they're close to four to five million Hindu Americans. And, uh, and, and they have been not just uh, contributing, but they have been at the front lines of, uh, of the effort to deal with this pandemic. And uh, as you know, I mean, uh, within the medical community, there's a huge, huge section of participation from the Hindu American community. So doctors, uh, medical practitioners, nurses, uh, you name it, uh, a, a, even uh, pharmacists. And they are at the front line of this uh, pandemic and they are taking risk. They are risking their lives every day and uh, trying to help out. and. Uh, the situation as it looks now, I mean, it's it's bad, but hopefully it will get better. I mean, as of today, we have 22,000 people dead and this is uh, April 12th. And uh, I was just looking at the numbers today. So 2000 more people are have passed away. And then we have nearly, you know, 560,000 people in America who are who are infected with it. And it's rising rapidly, but uh, they're, they're bright bright spots also to be looked at. And as we look at Europe and other parts of the world, we, we see that there is a brightness coming up forward. And coming back to the discussion on the Hindu American community, I mean, not just the frontline workers and the medical practitioners who, who happen to be Hindu Americans, but uh, there are organizations, uh, Hindu American organizations uh, who have been working very hard. Uh, Seva International, uh, I don't know how many people know about it, but uh, it's, it's a very, uh, reputed uh, non-profit. Uh, it's a Hindu faith organization. It works around the world and Seva International has been at the forefront of, uh, uh, of providing uh, not just uh, medical supplies, uh, gloves and, and face masks uh, to the community, uh, but they have been actually, uh, they have created a data, a data bank for plasma. So it's a plasma bank that, uh, that will help people who are uh, badly infected and who need plasma donation from people who have been cured of the disease. So this is, this is a very uh, new and a very forward thinking idea that 
Seva International has taken up and uh, I hope it, it will help people and save lives. And not mm -hmm. just, uh, you know, Seva International, but BHP America itself, the World Hindu Council of America itself, has been trying to cover a whole spectrum of, uh, of issues uh, lead in that can help people. Uh, on one hand, uh, volunteers of uh, World Hindu Council of America are providing food uh, in Boston and, and other areas uh, in New Jersey. They have been providing uh, hand gloves, uh, medical gloves, as well as face masks. Uh, to the to the police, to the to the fire and uh, frontline workers, the fire departments, to nurses, uh, and they are also right now working on providing mental health counseling. And uh, people are 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 talking and calling and doing video conferencing. And there is something called the Om chanting, which is which is a meditation and prayer effort, and that's being done remotely. So all in all, I think it's it's a it's a full spectrum effort from. From the Hindu community, and uh, you know, we need to. So, 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 coming to VHPA, do you have any specific numbers that you can share? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so, uh, so, so that people who are watching this, who are listening to this, uh, can gauge the amount, you know, the scale of the contributions that VHPA is making in American society. Correct, correct. And I mean, I, I can, I can name a few places where, where we have people that I know of who are participating. Uh, so in New Jersey, for example, we have 20 volunteers who are, who are working to do the outreach and help out with the uh, medical gloves. This, they, they gave about 89,000 uh, surgical and non-surgical hand gloves uh, to the That's pretty impressive. frontline yeah. workers in New Jersey. And New Jersey is one of the worst affected areas after New York, uh, as we all know. So in Ohio, for example, uh, there are at least 10 volunteers from uh, World Hindu Council of America, VHPA, who are reaching out to at least uh, three hospitals in Ohio. Similarly, in Pennsylvania, they have about uh, five volunteers doing you know, outreach, you know, food and all med medical services, uh, healthcare products to about three hospitals as well. And in Massachusetts, one hospital. And uh, so, so people are doing outreach and, uh, you know, in Illinois, we have about uh, five volunteers. In uh, Indiana, we have 10 volunteers. In Pennsylvania, uh, I, I, as I said, we have about five volunteers. So, so there's a lot of work going on. And, and right. I don't right. have the numbers for uh, California, but California is also, there's a huge effort going so, on. So I, I just want to kind of, uh, you know, emphasize that these are the five volunteer coordinators or leaders. Actually, if you look at the uh, people who are helping these five coordinators or 10 coordinators, because really distribution of 85,000, 89,000 gloves uh, is not a work of 20 people or 10 people or five people, right? So I think these are the coordinators that we are talking right. about, like 20 right. coordinators or five coordinators, right. but the That's actual right. number of volunteers who are helping making the masks at home or uh, helping raise the funds or helping doing some other activities, that number is much larger. I and agree, and, and it's a, it's a I, huge number. Yep. Yeah. And I, I think, you know, uh, as a Hindu, as a faith-based Hindu organization, uh, taking in these challenging times, taking care of uh, people's spiritual needs is also equally important. And one of the projects that uh, uh, VHPA has is called Hindu Mandir Executive Conference or HMEC. And HMEC is a, uh, you know, is a conference which brings together about 400 Hindu mandirs or Hindu temples. And in just an HMEC driven uh, OM chanting that happens every Sunday, uh, that effort, I, I don't know the latest numbers uh, from today, but I think the first time this was done, uh, that is on uh, the, yeah, it was live streamed on Twitter and Facebook. And on Facebook, we had 30,000 people have viewed that OM chanting. And that is, you know, uh, that is a significant number. One of the other things that I am aware of uh, from this, uh, you know, uh, is that all of these mandirs are doing um, the uh, various, uh, you know, various seva activities in their own communities. And BHPA is helping uh, publicize their activities or HMEC is uh, helping them publicize these activities uh, in terms of having their outreach on, uh, you know, on the Facebook pages and on, uh, you know, on other forums, uh, sending out newsletters that saying, that all of these uh, mandirs in the local communities are doing the activities. Mm -hmm. And um, various other Hindu organizations have uh, spiritual, a uh, lot of spiritual programs going on. There are 
meditation groups. Uh, they're, they're doing uh, daily and weekly meditations. There are bhajan groups that are doing daily and weekly bhajans or uh, devotional song singing. And there are discourses uh, that are going on. There are yoga classes that are going on. Uh, so in all different ways, the community is kind of coming together and, you know, really uh, helping everyone else out in, in whether it's financially, I know that uh, BHPA has been raising funds. One of the, uh, you know, one of the things that we saw a need was uh, the priests, the temple priests, and these temple priests have lost their livelihood. And I think at some point they'll get the government funds and if they were employed, but a lot of them had, don't have money to tide over. They don't, you know, they're not wealthy to begin with. And we created a GoFundMe campaign for these for people to contribute to these, uh, the well-being of the priests in the meantime, while they get the government, uh, you know, funds or whatever, because they're un unemployed pretty much, because nobody's going to the temples anymore. So okay. I think it's, it's really a test of the community and community organizations as to, in challenging times, how they bring everyone together. Um, our, uh, why, why don't we see more of the why don't we see more of the publicity of the work that Hindus are doing? I have my own theories, but I would rather ask you first. Well, uh, I mean, the, one of the value systems that many Hindus carry with them growing up is, uh, and, and and this comes from a very Asian traditional uh, 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 mor morality and, and ethic uh, system is that uh, you don't promote what you think is good. You hope somebody else promotes it if it is good enough. And, and, and a lot of Hindus living in America uh, come from that kind of ethical uh, upbringing um, because many of them are immigrants into this country and first generation immigrants. And they come, they bring those value systems from Asia. And uh, so one of, the, one of the issues that Hindu Americans always face is that they are not good marketers. And uh, it is not just in the aspect of, of community work and social uh, outreach that this happens. It is also happening in their professional lives sometimes. And I, I know people who, who have suffered in their careers because of that, but that's a topic for another conversation. Uh, so in general, Hindu Americans believe in, a, in an ethical system where they don't want to promote themselves. They would rather hope if their work is good enough, it will speak for itself. So, so that's one of the reasons why, you know, Hindu Americans usually don't try to market the outreach and the effort and the, and the, and the help that they're trying to provide to the community in general, the larger American community. Uh, but at the same time, as, as you can see, I mean, you saw President Trump's uh, uh, press conference two days ago, he was profusely thankful of uh, uh, India uh, for providing uh, medicines to America. And uh, so I think, I think, and, and most Hindu Americans in America, you know, predominantly come from India, um, but you know, they're, they're Hindu Americans from all racial and ethnic backgrounds in America. So, so there is recognition of what Hindu Americans are doing. Uh, I personally know a lot of people who, who come to me and say, you know, I sometimes post some of the things on Facebook that, that World Hindu Council of America, VHP America is doing or Seva International is doing, and they, they they know they they hear about it the first time but they they start following it and then they say that yeah thank you so much for for being being so uh, you know hard working in the community and trying to help out but i think this is true about all communities as well uh, i am seeing people from across the social spectrum of america coming together uh, and trying to do things to to make it easier because this is unprecedented as you said and it's it's a 100 year event and uh, you know. I, I actually I, I'll go a little bit further than you did because when I was growing up, I was told that the charity was should be done in such a way that if your right hand gives, your left hand should not know that you've done that charity. And uh, some of us, some of us have grown up with that really uh, infused in our beings, that infused in our system that you should never publicize if you have done charity or if you have helped someone else out. And we have been told that the reason, real reason why you're doing charity is because it makes you feel good. It's not that you're doing a big favor to someone else, but that is your duty, that is your karma. And 
if there is any pleasure of uh, you know every any satisfaction that you're getting you're, you're going to get is self satisfaction and not uh, of contributing your bit and not uh, creating an obligation on part of the person who has received it and i think i, I think hindus carry that but i think you touched upon the other i, I want to talk to talk to you a little bit about what uh, something else that you touched upon and that is uh, uh you know uh, I mean, we all come from india america is our karma bhumi or place where we do the work and india is our dharma bhumi where uh, we look to for spiritual guidance and india is um, india is still somewhat behind the curve but india has very strict lockdown policy that is going on right now but yesterday over a thousand people were added uh, it's the biggest jump in a day it went from 7000 to 8000 people impacted uh the number of deaths is not very high but uh, I, you know what are your thoughts about the way uh the covid-19 has spread in india well uh, i don't know if you are following the news uh, from india uh, but uh, it, it is because of a certain uh, small section of the society uh, uh, a radical islamic group called tablighi jamaat that kind of broke away uh from the norms and the and the strict uh, you know uh, social distancing uh, personal distancing rules that were being implemented throughout india from very early on um, even before america was implementing it so that group broke away uh, from that stricture and kept on uh, doing events there was a massive event in in delhi and 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 so and this was because it's a pan islamic group they had people from all over the world and they had people from china they had people from thailand they had people from sri lanka bangladesh you know they had people from all over and that's why the, the transmission was very fast and 90% of the cases that are being added in the last 3 4 days in india are specifically people who are belonging to that particular islamic movement uh and that's why the cases are are you see the number and, is rising and in fairness i mean we we feel compassion for that community also because they uh, you know carelessness of a few people in that community now uh, it is spreading uh, you know widely among them but it's not just that right because the same group had a gathering in pakistan the same group had gathering in indonesia and other countries and a lot of cases in these countries also are Correct. driven by the you know, close contact uh, you know conventions that they had uh, in there so i think uh, you know as uh, you know i i i read somewhere that uh, you know the this uh, you know this particular pandemic does not uh, discriminate based on uh, you know the uh, race or creed or religion or color or any of that uh, but it does uh, you know uh, for people who are careless and people who are uh, you know who have the sense of invincibility invincibility Uh, are going to learn uh, very painfully that uh, they are causing a lot of innocent deaths right absolutely true and and you you touched upon a very valid point and and this is relevant to the larger conversation in the news media and social media out there india has been drawing a lot of flack from the usual you know suspects that india has been uh, responding very strongly to the to the uh, spread that is being caused by tablighi jamaat but many people are ignoring as as you mentioned that pakistan itself which is you know which takes pride in being a muslim country a, as its identity uh, they are having a lot of trouble with tablighi jamaat and they are cracking down on them very aggressively malaysia indonesia uh, all these countries in in south and southeast asia which has this very powerful pan islamic movement uh, rising and radicalizing the population they are all having this problem and they are all cracking down Uh, even sometimes more harshly than even india is because india always has to deal with uh, with some flack from for being a right. minority country well, and especially in this time of these crises i mean i think uh, uh, all people who are reasonable have to kind of come together otherwise you know uh, it's going to end up impacting everyone absolutely and i mean one of the points that i would like people in america to understand it that groups like tablighi jamaat are actually active even in america they're not that numerous but uh, they they are active here and uh, i haven't heard any incidences of uh, spread because of them here because i just believe that they are they're not that numerous and they cannot congregate in such huge numbers uh, but 
in america itself uh, people have to understand the state department uh, the, the law enforcement the department of homeland security needs to look into these things and learn from other countries experiences and 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 try to preempt these kinds of uh, uh, groups involved in spreading and and deal with it i mean in general i think this pandemic has taught us uh, almost all major countries around the world the need for preemption and preparation at so many levels uh, that we haven't done so i want to uh, you know uh, thank you for for your participation this has been a, a great experience i think uh, we will we will continue this next week so Absolutely. thank you again uh, i, I had think a this great was time. a great experience for both of us thank you ajay ji and i had a great time and i look forward to carrying on this conversation and uh, yeah there there are so many things to discuss the you know this is this is fun thank you so much yeah, yeah thank you thank namaste you. namaste